The cool crisp is in the air, it's fall, and I'm making soup with a Thai-inspired twist on this episode of Cook This. Hey guys, I'm Shireen with Cook This. Today we're making curry butternut squash bisque. My favorite, it has a little spice, certainly warms your heart for this time of the year. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with a butternut squash. I'm gonna show you how to cut it up. So this is about a three pounds. So you just wanna cut the top off. You want a serrated knife and, I, and you gotta put a little bit of elbow grease into this. So you would prep a pumpkin, if you're doing pumpkin soup, or, or any type of fresh pumpkin the same way as the butternut squash. And you can go to my website, tweetneats.com, where I'll show you how to roast a pumpkin as well. So the first thing you wanna do is get rid of the top and the bottom. You want it to be flat. And I actually like to cut it in half. That way, it's just a little bit easier. Then, it's really difficult to peel. I say use the serrated knife. Just sort of shave it right along the body of the squash, just like that. So just go all the way around and then we're just gonna dice it and pop it into my sheet tray. My oven is heated about 400, 425 degrees. Always like to group anything I'm roasting in the center. That way everything gets evenly coated and we're not seasoning the actual sheet tray. We're seasoning the butternut squash. So salt and pepper, a little bit of canola oil into the oven. So I'm going to toss this, spread it apart into the oven until it's nice and tender. About 20, 25 minutes. Now we need to melt some butter. And typically when you're making a soup, you start with a mirepoix. Well, I'm going to tweak mine a little bit. So I have some onion. I have some celery, but instead of carrots, I'm going to sweeten it with a little bit of tart from a Granny Smith apple. So I'm going to dice up my Granny Smith apple, get this into the pot and saute it, and that Granny Smith is going to give a nice surprise element, a little tartness mixed with that red curry paste, that little bit of spice, and a little surprise from some ginger. This is going to be so good. All right, so I'm gonna saute this until our onions, celery, and apples are nice and tender. So I rarely will saute with butter because it burns, but because of the apples and the onions, the milk solids will absorb into them and then just leave the clarified version of the butter, making it perfect to saute in and delivers so much great flavor. Showed you this before. The best way to peel ginger is just use a spoon. You won't hurt yourself. You get in those little nooks and crannies. Skin peels off and the ginger stays behind. Our apples, celery, and onions are nice and tender. I'm just going to clear a little spot in the bottom of the pan because we still need to saute our ginger and red curry. So you totally have to saute the curry. If you don't, It'll be really grainy. It'll give the soup a really grainy texture. So you actually just want to take a little whisk and just whisk the curry and really saute it a good one to two minutes just to sort of liquefy it so it's nice and smooth. So it gives a little heat. So I'm using red curry, which gives a little zip of spice, beautiful flavor, and I love ginger. Ginger gives that, I always call it like a uh, citrusy zip. It has like a little citrusy heat to it, just a nice warm element that makes the soup. This is what makes the soup. The curry, the ginger, and that Granny Smith apple. That little bit of tartness, you've got some heat. Awesome. Just a couple minutes, I just want to saute this, get that curry nice and liquefied. Then we're going to go back to the oven and get that butternut squash. I think it's nice and tender. Why I like to roast it is because it just gives another level of texture. It gives you that sort of caramelized flavor that really builds great flavor into the soup. So I'm going to pop it right into our pot, add some vegetable stock. You could totally add chicken stock. But I like to keep it vegetarian. And I'm not a brand seller. However, 
There's only one vegetable stock on the market that I love. So if you're gonna use vegetable stock in this soup, Emeralds is really the best. It's so bold in flavor that it almost is just as great as a chicken stock. It's really great flavor. All right, so I'm gonna bring this to a boil, reduce it to a simmer to all these flavors combined, season it with salt and pepper, and then we're gonna puree it. This is perfect if you're having a fall festive dinner party. This is such an elegant, beautiful soup. Or even during Halloween, make it and enjoy it. You are gonna love this. So let's let this steep and build the flavors. And now we need to puree it until it's nice and smooth. Take some fresh chives. Just snip them with your kitchen shears right over top. It's so creamy, so bold in flavor. And there is no cream in here. It will totally fool you. It's even healthy, and I didn't even try to. Look up this recipe, go to the newspaper's website. Make it for your family and friends this weekend. Happy fall. Enjoy.